Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Science at Home. In today's episode, we're going to learn all about speed guns. We're going to figure out the physics behind them, and we're going to build our very own, so you can figure out how to build a device that can measure the speed of moving objects. So have you ever thought about how a speed gun actually works? I mean, if the guards point some sort of a gun at a, at a car, how can they detect what speed it moves at? Well, the type of gun we're going to build today is called a Doppler speed gun, and it uses a thing called the Doppler effect in order to understand the speed of an object that's moving. But what is the Doppler effect? Well, I'm going to explain it to you by using a Bluetooth speaker on a rock. I can explain the Doppler effect to you by just generating a tone out of this speaker. Let me turn it up a bit. Hear that? It's a single tone. Now listen to what happens as I rotate it around my head. Did you notice the difference? So how could me spinning it around change the sound like that? Have a think and try and think what could have been causing that? Any ideas? Well, try another one here. If you're asked, if someone asked you, what's the sound a race car makes? Even if you ask a small child what the sound a race car makes, they'll probably say, meow. Yeah, that's the sound we think of. But let's break it apart into two parts. The first part it makes is ee, and the second part is ow. So it's going from high pitched to low pitched, just like the sound we heard. So there's obviously something got to do with when something's moving towards you or moving away from you. Yeah, it affects the sound. So, what is sound again? Yeah, we should remember that sound is a wave, yeah? And we know that we can draw them like waves on the ocean. So you could have a low frequency sound, or you could have a high frequency sound. Yeah? You see, the only difference is the length of the waves. Low frequency sound has these long waves, high frequency sound has these short waves. And those waves just represent the pressure of the air around us, because when we talk or make a sound, we just squish together or pull apart the air molecules. So the tops of those waves, you can think about them as being the places where we have high pressure, where the air is being squished together. So if you hear a high frequency sound, it just means your eardrum is hearing these um, high pressure parts of the air very fast, do, 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 coming very fast to the ear. So imagine if an object is emitting sound. So it's emitting a wave just like this. Okay, so we get these high frequency parts coming one after the other in equal intervals. But imagine if the object is moving forward while it's emitting the sound. Well, it's catching up with the waves. Yeah, so it's emitting waves all the time, constantly, but if it keeps catching up on them, it's going to squish them all together. And imagine if the object is moving backwards, if it's going away while it's emitting sound. Okay, well, it's going to have the same thing. It's emitting these sound waves, but by the time it emits the second sound wave, it's already moved backwards, so it's actually stretching apart the sound waves. So that means to a person standing there listening, when an object comes towards them, the sound waves are squished together, which makes them high frequency, and when it goes away, it pulls them apart, which makes them low frequency. So this is how they're able to design speed guns. There's a mathematical relationship, yeah, that will tell you how fast an object is going depending on how much the frequency changes by its motion. Because the faster it goes, the bigger the change in frequency. So let's go have a look now at how we could build a speed gun like that based on those principles of physics. Okay, so here's everything we need to build our very own Doppler speed gun. We have a microphone and we have a speaker. We also need a laptop as well because we're going to have to run some software. Now I'm going to tell you the name of this software because it's free to download and it's really cool to use if you ever want to do audio experiments. Now the software is called Audacity. You can download it for free. I have the links, you can see it up there on the screen. And uh, if you download that software, if you feel like you'd like to do this yourself, work away, and you can follow the steps as I outline them here. Otherwise, you can just watch. So I'm going to generate a tone. You can see here, I'll press generate, tone. And you can choose the frequency of your tone. Do you want high frequency or low frequency? Now, I want quite a high frequency for this, so I'm going to choose 14,000 uh, hertz. Okay, 14,000. All right, so now it's generated a tone. And what does that mean? Well, if I press play, we'll hear that. Oh, it's very high pitched. You can just barely hear it. So it's, it's way up there. It's a really high frequency tone. So what's happening? That's coming out of this speaker. And of course, if we remember what sound looks like, you can imagine sound waves coming coming out of the speaker and they're moving across. And if it's 14,000 hertz, that means there's 14,000 sound waves coming every second. So loads and loads of them one after the other. 
Now, what would happen if I put an object in the way? Well, they're going to bounce off the object, aren't they? So if I put an object here, this is just a little picture I took off the wall, we can record the, um, the, the bounces. So I'm going to press record here. So now the speaker is putting out the sound. I put this object in the way. And this microphone is going to record the reflections. Now, if I hold it still, yeah, we should see that the re recording is the exact same frequency. But let's see what happens if I move it. So let's try that. Okay. So I moved it at a couple of different speeds, towards and away. So let's take a look and see, can we actually take any sort of measurements from that? So if we zoom in here on our little audio track that we recorded, you see it here, you're learning a few things about uh, music uh, production as well. Uh, now, the key here, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit on my track. The key here is that you want to click this audio track button and you wanna change it to spectrogram. So we're getting a bit more scientific here. A spectrogram uh, is just, um, it's just a way of seeing all the different frequencies of sound that were emitted, okay? So what you can see here is this might look a bit crazy, this whole diagram here, but if you look on the left-hand side, you see all these numbers, and we chose 14,000 hertz, also called 14 kilohertz, using a K for kilo, just like a kilogram or a kilometer, and you'll see this pink line, this strong pink line the whole way across here. That is the beep, 14 kilohertz signal. But if you look closely, look if we zoom in a bit more here, you see that at certain points, you see little bumps. It goes up and it goes down. Those bumps are the change in the frequency that was recorded when I was moving towards or away. And if we zoom in there, and, you, and if you look at the numbers on the left-hand side, you can see that we can actually um, figure out exactly what the frequency was. So if we do that, if we figure out what the change in the frequency was, and if we put that into Doppler's equation, we'll be able to figure out the speed at which the object was moving. So let's take a look at Doppler's equation, put in all our numbers, and see what speed it was. Okay, I did it. All right, so let's figure out what the speed was when I moved it the fastest. So the biggest peak we saw there was at 14.7 kilohertz. That was the biggest change from that 14 kilohertz, which is what we originally output it. So let's take a look at the Doppler formula. Here it is. Looks a bit confusing, doesn't it? What do all these numbers and letters mean? Well, let me explain it to you. We just have to put in here the actual frequency that was being emitted, which was 14 kilohertz, 14,000 hertz. We have here the uh, frequency that was observed. So this was the frequency that was recorded by the microphone. We have the speed of sound, which we know is 343 meters per second. And we have the speed of the object. So if we put in all the numbers we know into our equation, yeah, we'll see there's one thing left that we're looking for. And this is what we love doing in physics. So now all we have to do is jumble around the equation using the rules of algebra, okay? So if you learn your algebra, you'll be able to do all this. Jumble it all around, do some subtracting, dividing, moving around. It's just like solving a little puzzle. And at the end, we're gonna end up with our answer. So the answer we got was 16 meters per second. That was the speed that I was moving at when I was going fast. Okay, and then I was able to drop in when I moved a bit slower, I just dropped in a different number because we saw it went up to 14.3 kilohertz on the scale. When we jumbled in all those numbers and put them around, we see that it came out as seven meters per second. Okay, so you can see that we were able to get the exact data of the speed of a moving object just by throwing it into this software, putting it into the Doppler equation, and that's that. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. You've learned all about the Doppler effect, yeah? And how the Doppler effect affects the frequency of sound. And we use that information to build our very own speed gun so we can find the speed of objects moving towards or away from us. So thanks again for tuning in guys, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one.